Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures, and today we're talking about beyond the cyber poverty line. Now, I'm talking to you today as a former NSA, former co-founder of Tenable Network Security, and president of Gula Tech Adventures, where we do a wide variety of cybersecurity investing and philanthropy, as well as public education. A couple of years ago, we published our blog, The Cybersecurity Poverty Line, Cyber Poverty Line. So sort of our take on Wendy Nather's security poverty line that basically said, you are above this line if you are doing both hygiene and hunting. Because of course, if you have hygiene, then you know about all your assets, you know how to defend them. But you have to hunt because you can't defend everything. So unless you're doing both, you are below the cyber poverty line. So a lot of people in the world, whether they're big organizations or small organizations, they live below because they don't hunt or they don't have good hygiene. And then the folks who are above it, you know, they have both. But then the question is, is well, how? What do you do with this when you're there? Do you do you patch faster? Do you have three intrusion detection systems? Do you have multiple EDRs? You know, an MSSP to watch your MSSP. It's really, really hard to figure out what to do next. So I had a conversation with uh, with a financial CISO, and he said that he really felt that the next level to this, and it really resonated with me, was basically having organizations adopt business. Practices. Now, what does that mean? Business risk practices it really means three lines of defense. Now, if you're in financial risk or large, uh, you know, board governance risk, you're familiar with the three lines of risk. It's basically operations, it's risk management, and it's uh, internal and external auditing. But you might say, well, what does this really mean for a small business? Can I have a risk management team when I'm in a small business and whatnot? But the reality is that you can't. Uh, you know, uh, every business has to identify how it operates. And this includes what data, where they put their data, what IT applications they use, what the employees they are, geopolitical risk, state risk, all these different kind of things. How do you operate and do the business? And then the second thing is, how do you then make changes to how the business operates? And then finally, how do you prove this with both the internal audits, things you want to check, but also demonstrating compliance with possibly, possibly Byzantine and seemingly non-regular uh, 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 compliance standards that you might be subject to. And then even from an IT point of view, you can start asking some really interesting questions. Does your cyber stack, does all of your IT decisions, does it enable your, uh, your business? And this is not just sprinkling EDR and patching across your system. It's actually making decisions about how you want to accept risk for your, for your company. What's in the cloud? What's in your area of operation? What's in your own data center? Are you going to use foreign technology? Are you going to use foreign contractors? These are all business decisions and decisions made by your executive management that no amount of EDR is going to stop you know, the wrong employee from having access to sensitive data. So you need to understand how your, your business works. And then the second thing is, does your your cyber stack, I like to call it, but does it identify and changes how your business is used, right? If there's only supposed to be 10 people, uh, you know, in the accounting team logging on to the accounting system and, a, and you count 11, well, that's a change. Maybe that's something somebody's supposed to be doing, or maybe that's something that's not going to, uh, to be allowed further. And then finally, does your cyber stack make it easy for you to demonstrate compliance with your internal audits and also your external compliance? Uh, requirements, which are very different. Running your business security and demonstrating compliance, they're not the same thing, but they should be easy. And because if you're doing it this way, and because of that, I agree with this assessment. I think once you have cyber poverty line, once you're above that, right, the next level that you really need to think about is, do you have the IT and the data and the operations control for your company to enable it to succeed with the risk that you want to go forward? So I'm a big fan of this approach. I like this. I'm going to keep talking more about this to small companies and big companies that I meet. And I think this is uh, well worth considering to those who are on their way to being safe in cyberspace. I'm Ron Gula. Thanks for listening. If you want to see more videos like this, you can check out our uh, Gula Tech Adventures channel at YouTube. You can subscribe to this video, this channel, or you can uh, just visit us at LinkedIn or go over to gula.tech and check out our videos live there. Have a great day.